The Song of Mary Louise Entler Harrington, 1840-1932, about the end of the heydays of a great inn, about the innkeeper's feisty, adventurous, amorous young daughter during the Civil War, who lived to tell about it and to see her family's inn perish. Chapterettes, Prelude, Flag Dangerous. Prelude, the 1850s in Shepherdstown. Good times for Joseph and Mary Entler. The Entlers boarded travelers and stabled their teams by the score in their great western inn on Shepherdstown's German Street. As their daughter, Mary Louise Entler Harrington, told it later, after my father bought it in 1809, he hung a large sign swung across the pavement at the east corner of the house. A heavy post at the curb supported one side, and the other side was fastened to the house. In the middle of the sign, in large letters that were plainly visible for squares up and down the street, was the word, IN. And just below that, Joseph Entler. For many years it was a welcome abode to the weary traveler, for then all traveling was by wagon and carriage from Ohio and Kentucky to Baltimore and Washington, where their produce was sold and groceries and other commodities were taken back. All these white covered wagons were placed in the large grounds, and the weary horses were comfortably bedded down and fed in the large stone stables by good trusty colored men. The house was a quaint, 50-foot-long weatherboard house with massive stone steps to both front doors and stone trimmings and steps to the front cellars, and long, massive stone stiles or carriage stepping stones. The ice house was under the dining room and was filled every winter with 25 four-horse wagon loads of ice, which lasted until fall. The ice was from the Potomac River. The large fireplace was in the kitchen that also had the cranes and pot hooks and hangers. Seventeen rooms were in the house, and many also had large old-fashioned fireplaces and were finished with high-paneled mantelpieces. In the 1850s, children remembered the fancy carriages with many horses pulling, making a smart, sharp turn from the main street to the lane leading to the rear stables. All circuses stopped at this inn and pitched their tents in the large lot next to it, arranging the cages of wild animals around the circle inside and all other wagons outside the tent. Joseph Entler moved his family to Wingard Cottage in 1858 and leased out the Great Western. Then that all ended, and so did the Great Western. Da 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 do 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 da 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 do 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 da 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 do da 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 do do da 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 do 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 da 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 do 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 da 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 do 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 do
Chapter at 2 Flag Dangerous 21 year old Mary Louise Endler, in an act of defiance, with several friends, sat in chairs in the big hall of Wingard Cottage, sewing and sewing, ripping stars from an American flag mailed to them from New Orleans. A flag that once waved from the ship of Reason Davis Shepherds. Perhaps he thought such a flag might be more trouble to have in New Orleans as the new war boiled over and Louisiana seceded from the Union in early 1861. Mary retold her flag story to a relative later in life. A United States flag, probably made of wool bunting fabric, was given to four or five young girls, including Mary, by Mr. James Shepard, and was to be converted into a Confederate flag, a work that was dangerous at the time, being in disputed territory. Mary recalled, My father, Joseph, owned and lived at Wingard Cottage during the war, and there the flag was made. The location, off from town, and the large, wide hall were ideal places for the work. It was very tedious to rip every seam of the stripes in such a way as not to ravel the bunting. Every star was ripped from the blue field and then to sew all the red together and all the white to form the bars red, white, and red. After many weeks of work, the flag was finished and a beautiful flag was ready to be sent through the line to Company B. My brother, Cato Moore Antler, was with Company B of the 2nd Virginia Infantry, but before then, it was hidden away awaiting a safe transfer. That fall, Mary heard the tramp of cavalry and clank of swords and sabers. She remembered, I looked out the window and saw the cottage was surrounded by Yankee cavalry. Oh, the flag! What was to be done with it? I heard the officer read orders to my father to search his premises thoroughly for contraband goods. My father seemed to be protesting against the search, but that gave me little time to take the flag from its hiding place in a chest. The house was surrounded. I could not get out to hide it. I pulled a dress from the wall and put the flag in it and threw the dress carelessly across the back of a chair. Skirts were very wide and deep facings upon them. I put the little flags that we wore on our dresses and letters under the carpet. My door was pushed open by Captain Horner of Colonel Cole's cavalry and the search began. Every bureau drawer and closet was searched, even the grandfather clock where we posed letters to go through the lines, but they were too deep in the bottom of the old clock to be detected. Everything was handled but the blue striped dress hovering over its precious treasure. It was too insignificant to attract their notice and they gave up the search, but rather in a bad humor. The flag was safe and sent to Company B. That flag would be readily recognized by its many seams and its homemade marks. Confusing more still was yet another local homemade flag made for the same regiment, the 2nd Virginia, from Charlestown. The confusion of homemade regimental flags galore was resolved when Virginia's Governor Letcher, in October 1861, had every state regiment given an official bunting flag. Flags perish with time. But a good story about making a flag, such as Mary's flag, lives on, even as we speak.